my youtube channel uh, my name is Gloria Susan and guess what today I'm here with my auntie she's going to show us how to make um, okay some crochet for those who love mm -hmm. crochet mm -hmm. crochet Shalom Kigame and we have some few samples here as you can see they are so cute and she will show us how to make to make them the baby shoe and the hat welcome thank you okay hello crocheters I have here my tools of trade we have a set of hooks different size of hooks a pair of scissors and we also have a tape measure a yarn needle and a stitch marker if you don't have a stitch marker you can use any extra piece of yarn just to mark so different size of hook remove different size of uh, product depending on the yarn you use and also it can, the bigger the hook if you use the same yarn is a loser stitch the smaller the hook the same yarn is a tighter stitch we also have different types of yarn many people call thread or uzi is the same thing uh, so today for my sample i'll be using a five millimeter hook we will begin with a baby shoe i will show you one sample and then you will do the very same thing for the extra shoe so we will make a slip knot to begin to make a slip knot you wrap the yarn around your finger once and again take it behind and then pass the back loop through the front loop like that and pull tight to form a loop just one then put your hook through and pull the yarn not too tight just enough to fit your hook then this is the tail yarn we'll put it back this is the working yarn it comes from the ball of thread so to begin we will chain one two three four five six seven eight nine so you see these are nine stitches or chains that is what we call the foundation chain so one two three four five six seven eight and nine you will go into the third chain from the hook so that is one two three the third chain from the hook so i'm counting from the hook one two three mark it with your finger yarn over that's what we call yarn over and then put your hook into the third chain that is the top loop if you can see that pull we yarn over again that's putting the thread over the hook and pull through you will have three loops yarn over and pull through all three loops that is what we call a half double crochet you will do it again in the very same stitch so yarn over go into the stitch pull a loop three loops yarn over pull through three loops so you have done two half double crochets in the very same stitch 
then you will yarn over go into the next stitch the stitches usually look almost like this if you hold it like this so you will go into the next stitch the first loop yarn over and pull through three do so that's one into the next stitch two three four so when you have finished five half double crochets this is what it should look like then you will continue you should be remaining with only one stitch yarn over in the last stitch we will do six half double crochets in the very same stitch so when you finished your six half double crochets in the last chain it will look something like this and this is what we call the foundation row so you will come to the opposite side of the stitches that we, now we are on the opposite side of the foundation chain you will do the same thing you did here which is five half double crochets in each stitch now this tail you can hold it at the back so you can hide it as we work so five half double crochets on the opposite side So at the end of the five half double crochets you'll have something like this you'll see you are left with the first chain that you started with and into that you will put three half double crochets so three half double crochets into the last stitch one two into the very last stitch and if you look i hid my tail as i was working so i don't need to have it i can just snip i'll just get my pair of scissors and snip that foundation chain and it's securely tied so now we want to join the work at the end if you want to know the first chain you can count back one two three one two three four five one two three four five six one two three four five and one two three so this is our last chain so you can put your hook you have to find both loops the front loop and the back loop put your hook through there and that will be the one that you uh, started with so once your hook is in you'll do something called a slip knot to join so you'll yarn over pull through that stitch then pull through the loop that is on your hook so now we are going to the second row you will chain one and two So to continue you will do a double crochet in the very same stitch that this chain 2 comes out of. So if you're looking for the stitch that this chain 2 comes out of it is this very one here where you slip where you put your slip knot. So you will go into the very same chain this one so you yarn over and into that stitch you will pull a loop. So for a double crochet you will pull through the first two loops after yarning over then you will pull again through the last two so that is what we call a double crochet so you have effectively done two double crochets in the very first stitch so you again do two double crochets in the next two stitches Once you finish that you come to the five stitches that you did at the start and we will do five double crochets into each of the next five stitches at the end of doing two double
double crochets into each of the next six stitches you should have something like this so we are going to again do one double crochet into each of the next five stitches so we have done five double crochets you should be left with three stitches in which you will do two double crochets into each of the next three stitches so at the end we will come to the top now where you did your chain two chain one chain two so at the top of your chain two is where you will join because that was your very first stitch make sure to grab both loops so we will slip stitch so pull a loop and pull through the loop on your hook so what we have completed is the sole of our shoe you can continue in the very same color to do your shoe but for me i will change colors so to change color we are going to take our new yarn the white yarn an easy way to join new yarn is to just make a slip knot again and instead of chaining sorry and instead of chaining with your old yarn put the new yarn on your hook and we will pull the new yarn through the chain the hook the, the chain that is on your hook just like that so what we have here is the tail of the new yarn and the old yarn. That is what we will drop. And we will now chain with our new yarn. So we will chain one, two. Now for this part to go to the next part of the shoe, you will see what we have here are the, the stitches. It has the back loop and the front loop let me remove this it has the back loop and the front loop for this round we will be working in the back loop only all around the back loop only so what we can do is you put your hook now for the next part we are doing single crochets you will take your hook go into the back loop only Pull a loop and pull through both loops. That is what we call a single crochet. Again, in the next stitch, in the next stitch, go through the back loop only, pull a loop, and pull through two loops. That's what we call the single crochet. Now, you will do that all around until you come back to the beginning. <music> So I'm nearing the end of my work and I've worked in the back loops only. It will create such a ridge all around so we can finish together. Now if you count around you should have 34 stitches. So we will come to the top of the chain two to join. So you must take your hook. You can just use your finger to do that. And then we will join with a slip stitch. And we have effectively come to the top part of our shoe. Wow, it looks so nice. Yes. So now that we have the top part of our shoe, and we are through with the blue yarn, I will cut leaving a tail. So we'll do what is called weaving in our tails later, this yarn. So you can just leave it hanging for now, together with the one of joining. You can just leave them hanging for now. So to continue with our shoe, we are continuing to work in single crochets. Mm -hmm. So you will chain one. Wow, I've already seen the shape of shoe coming. Oh. We have chained one. We will chain the second one. So in our very first, this will count as a stitch. So there is no need to work another one. We go to the next stitch and do another a single crochet in the next 
a single crochet so if we count that's one two three single crochets we do four five six seven eight nine so when you reach nine we will now start what we are doing is to close the front part of the shoe to create to create that shoe look that's a tongue twister so we'll do something that is called two single crochets together that stitch so you go into the first single crochet pull a loop into the second single crochet and pull a loop then you will yarn over and pull through all three loops so we have turned two stitches into one these two stitches we have turned into one stitch so that is single crochet together so you'll do it seven more times this is one so seven more times i can do one more that's two that's three do that until you have eight single crochets together So you should have eight stitches of single crochet together something like that that's how your shoe will be looking then you will just single crochet the remaining stitches you have one single crochet in each stitch i finished the remaining single crochets nine of them i will come and join to the top if you look this is our chain one two i will join to the top of the chain two just like that with a slip stitch so we can move now to around three of the top of the shoe so you chain one two then one single crochet in the next stitches one two Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We'll do again our single crochet stitches together, and this time we are going to turn the eight into four. So we will do single crochet stitches together. One, two, three, sorry, let me take that again. Three, four stitches. So if you look, the front part of our shoe has taken shape. Yeah. We will, yes, we will single crochet the remaining stitches. One single crochet in each of the remaining stitches. So at the end of this row, you should have 22 stitches. Then we will once again join to the top of the chain. Then we can chain one. I will just explain something here. If you want a taller shoe, you will keep crocheting rows of single crochet all around. But for us, we are just making a sample so we can make one more round of single crochets so that you can see the finished product of our shoe so i'm going to do again a row of single crochets all around one single crochet in each stitch all around So 
at the end of my round I will join with my slip stitch this is what your shoe should be looking like wow so this is what I was trying to say if you want a longer I think I'll call it a longer calf you just keep doing rows of single crochet maybe you can do two more rows of single crochet but since you are doing a simple shoe it looks something like this yes. that's rows of single crochet if you want it simple like that you can just do that if you want to put a flower we'll in a later video describe how to make a flower or a bow now this is what i'm explaining if you want to do a taller calf something like that so there is our shoe now that we are done we will yarn over and pull through this loop and pull it take our scissors and cut the yarn and pull it through so we will secure now this is where our yarn needle comes in we will go back to the inside of the shoe to secure these ends so you just need to pass it through like this the sole of your child from the toes to the heel okay. something like that then you'll know whether it fits your it fits your baby now if you want to know beforehand measure the sole of a child to say maybe four inches when you are making the foundation row make it until four inches long across if you need a bigger shoe you will add more rows on the sole and more constants these are what we call constants so for a bigger shoe you will have five constants in the mid for a bigger shoe this were five for a bigger you can have seven and go all around and that you'll get a bigger shoe something like this if you compare you can yeah. see this is a bigger shoe this is about three to six months mm -hmm. this is about zero, zero to, to three, three months, months. Yeah. yeah so that's what we are trying to say but if you see the process is the same it's just that the concerns are more mm. in a later video you can explain that the name of this thing and it's use okay yeah i mentioned this thing at the beginning but if you've done crochet so much sometimes you forget this is a stitch marker mm -hmm. when you're making stitches it's used to explain or rather to mark either the beginning of a stitch mm -hmm. where you don't want to forget so like when we were beginning this shoe mm -hmm. i would have marked my first stitch okay so that when i come to join i don't need to count all the way around to know which was my first stitch oh, okay. so i would have just put it in something like this mm -hmm. I don't oh, know. Yeah. that's my first stitch when i come to join I can just put this now if you don't have a stitch marker as i said you can use an extra piece of yarn mm -hmm. all you need to do is come in put your hook into the stitch you want to mark like that loop your yarn like that and pull through and oh. the, you will know that is your stitch that okay. you wanted to mark so that is the use of a stitch marker there are some Sometimes maybe when you're making a shoe and you it's like a sandal and you want to know I'll make it between these two places so you mm -hmm. just put stitch marker stitch marker stitch marker like that and you'll be able to know 
what stitches that you want to put or use to crochet.